Now that we've uh, got an understanding of our PLC schematics and our inputs and our outputs, now I'd like to take you into a process known as defining your I.O. And we're going to use uh, Microsoft Excel to do that. Microsoft Excel is a great program. Once we begin the PLC thought process of jotting down all of our addresses, our instructions, our labels, our symbols. So in this, this manner, we only have to do it one time. We're going to use Excel, we're going to get everything labeled, and then we're going to import that into the PLC processor. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open up Excel, and we're going to start that process. So open up your Excel on your computer, either you have it under the Start and Programs, or you have an icon for it. I have Microsoft Excel right down here on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and start from here. Okay, we just file open a regular Excel document, and then we're going to come down here on our additional sheets, and we have to delete those. So we're going to delete those two sheets, because we only need one sheet for this project. So I'm going to delete both of those. And to make this as easy as possible, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tile these windows. So I'm going to tile my windows vertically. Okay, and then I'm going to open up our base supply electrical schematics and then tile windows vertically so that now we can see in our screenshot here both the PLC schematics and our Microsoft Excel file that we have over here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the inputs I'm going to start by labeling up here with the address okay Next is going to be the status, which we don't really need too much, but we do have to have the proper format to download, so we're going to go ahead and include it. Next will be our symbol that we will use in the program. Then we will use a description after that. Okay, now I typically like to use all caps when I'm doing PLC programming, so I will turn the all caps lock on. So if we looked at our schematics, again, we know that the address is I colon two zero. If we just look here on the screen, we've got two one, two two, two three, et cetera, all the way across and all the way up to I colon two fifteen. So Excel has a really neat function called autofill. So if we just start here in this cell, A2, and I type I colon two slash zero, and I hit enter, that will automatically give me that address, but now I don't want to type another one. I'm going to do what's called autofill, and I drag here on the right side of the cell once it turns into a black four way cursor, and I drag it down until I get to I colon 215. Okay, this helps eliminate errors in addressing and helps to speed up the programming process. So the status of this bit we're just going to put as a zero for now. And we'll do the same thing. We'll copy those. We're just going to autofill all those zeros down to I215. So we've got all of our addresses already put in, and we've got our status already put in. So if I look at I colon 20, I'm going to put in the symbol of start push button. So I come up here, I do start underscore PB. And symbols are unique. You cannot have any spaces, that's why I use the underscore. Under description, I can put anything I want to in here, and I can have it as long as I need it to be, so I'm going to spell it out now. Start, push button, and hit enter. Okay, now notice that it fills over on the cells, that's okay. We come up here between the row and column that it's overfilling and we double click and that will automatically expand those cells to the proper length that it needs to accommodate the text. So what we do is we continue on with our inputs. We go to the next one which is I colon 2 1 and if we look at the schematic it is the stop push button. So Now I'm just going to do stop PB underscore PB because it's a symbol now in the description, I'm going to spell it out with a little bit more information. Stop P-U-S-H button. Stop push button. And the same thing for the one on the top. I'm going to fix that to start, start push button. So the first two addresses we have in are the start PB, the stop PB, and the descriptions are the start push button, stop push button. 
And then we're going to go to I colon 2 2, which is our auto manual selector switch. So I'm going to start with the symbol, auto man. And you can name it whatever you want. Just keep in mind that the symbols are limited in characters, and if you make them too long, it will eliminate the characters that overspill. So for the description, now I'm just going to type auto, manual, and I'm going to put in there selector switch, because that's exactly what it is on the station. And again, it overfilled here, so I just double click here. And I'm going to put a space in there, auto manual selector switch. Okay, and we'll make that fit again, auto manual. And the next one on our screen is our reset push button. So this will be reset underscore PB. And the description will be reset push button. Okay, next is I colon 24. We can see over here that it's manipulator back. Now, at this point, it may be very important that you name the something that you understand. So after you've studied the station long enough and you are confident that you know what manipulator back is, then go ahead and use that as a name. But if something makes more sense to you here, you need to rename it to something that you understand. I personally would rename them. So instead of manipulator back, I'm going to call this the transfer cylinder retracted because that makes more sense to me. So for I colon 24, I'm going to call this transfer underscore cylinder underscore RET for retracted. Okay, so now I can in the description give it a little bit more information. and spell out the words a little bit more. Okay, so now we have that one. Now I colon 25 is of course transfer cylinder extended. So I would just do the same thing. Start off here, spelling it. Except for now it is extended and the same thing here. transfer cylinder extended. So without doing all of these, what you do is you continue on in your programming. You keep labeling each one of these addresses. All of your inputs must have a unique symbol and then you can give them a description as to what they mean to you. So for the last one on here, I'm going to use I colon 213, which is the body presence according to the manufacturer's schematics. And I'm going to keep that one because that one makes sense to me. So I'm going to do body underscore present because it's a symbol. And a symbol is unique. It cannot have any spaces. And then I'm going to give this a description of parts in storehouse. Okay, so that means that we have parts available for the station. Okay, so that's how you do the inputs.